So this summer, for whatever reason, I've been taking this journey through the golden age of teen drama rom-com sitcoms, covering all the classic favorites from before the world was just like on fire all the time. I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between old Disney Channel stuff that I used to like and old Nickelodeon stuff that I know nothing about. And so, continuing my quest, I thought it was about time to check out one of Nickelodeon's most famous and most expensive shows they've ever done, apparently, Zoe 101. Let's take a walk. As always, we start off with our main character, Zoe, played by Britney Spears' younger sister, Jamie Lynn Spears. Now, her dad's driving her up to the Pacific Coast Academy, a prestigious boarding school in Malibu, California, where I assume everyone just wears Hollister and listens to Simple Plan on their MP3 players all day, because that's just what 2005 was all about. But for right now, she and her dad are having a little heart-to-heart -heart talk while her younger brother pees on a tree, like you do. So, first day of new boarding school, living on your own, away from home, it's okay to be nervous. I'm not nervous. Dad was talking to me. Do you not want me to go to school here? <laughs> oh, not Zoe, believe me. I've been trying to get you out of the house for months now. If I gotta watch you make one more of them gosh darn K-pop TikTok videos, I tell you what. Anyway, so after this, they all make their way over to Zoe's new school. And as you can imagine, everyone's kind of nervous, but also just really thrilled and excited and all those things you can still feel when you're young and you don't lay awake at two o'clock in the morning thinking about that time you tried to ask out that cute girl in your class because she looked at you once and you went up to talk to her and say hi, but the only thing that came out is... I like your teeth. Who says that? Anyway, back to whatever the show's about. Hey, I'm uh, gonna check and see where your dorm is. Dustin, start unpacking the car. All over it. Hey. Hey. Ah! Ugh. Ah! You know, I've always said the best way to measure how attractive you are is by how many people get life-threatening injuries whenever you walk by. Anyway, so this awkwardly approachable guy is Chase. And after he picks himself back up, he and Zoe get to talking about things and stuff. Um, I'm Zoe. Chase. So, uh, are you like a new student here at PCA? Yeah, I'm a new student here. Cool. Yeah, I, th I think it's great that uh, PCA is finally letting in girls. And, uh, you probably did too, be being a girl and all. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? So the very deep and necessary lore of this show is that this school used to be a boys only school, aka a cool school, but now for whatever reason they decided to let girls come in with all their makeup and their cooties. But anyway, after this, Chase takes Zoe to her dorm room and turns out it's all fancy and really purple for whatever reason. But right then, just when Zoe's about to get all settled and everything, she hears someone scream from the hallway and goes to check it out. Hi, did you just scream? I don't know, did it sound like this? <gasps> Yeah. Yeah, that was me. So, what's the matter? That's the matter! This is a girl's dorm, and that is clearly not for girls. Well, I mean, it could be if you just believed in yourself a little bit more. Or like, I don't know, maybe try doing a handstand or something. So, this girl's name is Nicole, and we come to learn that she's Zoe's roommate, who, understandably so, is deathly afraid of urinals. Wow, who'd have thought we'd meet by a urinal? Shh, don't say that out loud. You act like it's the first time you've seen one of these. Oh, please. I wasn't born yesterday. I know about boy stuff. So how do they sit on it? You know, if you just go to any New York City subway bathroom at like 1 o'clock in the morning, you'll find the answer to that question real quick. But then, right after this, they go back to their dorm room together, and there they meet their other roommate, and no doubt soon to be best friend, Dana. You don't just get this bed because you got here first. Okay. Well, do you want it? No. I'm just making a point. Well, which bed do you want? I wanted my own room, but this said I'm required to share, so I guess I'm stuck with you two. Just stay out of my way and out of my stuff, and we won't have a problem. Friendship is magic. Later in the day, Zoe and Nicole are giving themselves a little tour of the new campus, and on the way, they see a group of guys practicing for the upcoming basketball tryouts. And Zoe, being the troublemaker that she is, kinda sorta maybe wants to also try out for the basketball team. Well, I wanna try out, come on. Hi, guys. Hey, what's up, Zoe? What are they doing here? Thinking about trying out for basketball. <laughs> well, you better think some more. Oh, you think I should think more? <laughs> okay. What if my fingers had fingers? What color is the wind? Can soap get dirty? How long can I go without sleeping? Because it's been like four days at this point. No, seriously, you gotta help me. How do I sleep at night? So what ends up happening is Zoe challenges this guy, whose name is Logan, because of course it is. Anyway, she challenges him to a basketball game of five girls versus five guys to be held on Friday. To prepare for this, she and Nicole gather up as many girls as they can to try and find the best ones to beat the boys. Okay, how many of you have ever played on a basketball team? Okay, how many of you would say you're good at basketball? Um, 
I once made a basketball explode. How? Chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> Girls playing sports? Okay, what's next? A grown man making fun of kids shows for a living? Ha! <laughs> Hilarious! So Friday comes and they play basketball against the guys, and things go about as well as you might expect for a show like this, with the boys just sinking all these sweet baskets, and the girls just kind of running around like, Duh! But just when it looks like everything's going wrong, and the girls' team is down by like a bajillion points or whatever, guess who shows up at the last second to save the day? Copyrighted music. Okay guys, let's really try to focus. Can I play? Um, we kind of have a full team. Bye! I guess you're in. You any good? Wow. And of course, Logan sees this, you know, and he's all like, A girl who's good at basketball? <laughs> what? <laughs> now, long story short, the girls do end up losing by one point. However, Zoe and Dana are given spots on the basketball team because they played so gosh darn well. And of course, everyone is very supportive of this outcome. Look who lost. Hope you learned your lesson. I sure did. How would you two girls like to join the basketball team? What? I'll think about it. Fair enough. What about you, Zoe? I think you'd make an excellent point guard. Coach, I play point guard. Yeah, sometimes things change. Coach, are you seriously going to put a girl on our team? Hey, you catch on quick for a guy. <laughs> And at the very end of the episode, the girls are throwing a little party in their, like, commons area thing, where they're all dancing and making this weird face for some reason, and some of the basketball guys come over to apologize about their behavior and welcome the girls to the school and all that kind of stuff. Well, me and the guys just came down here to tell you that we're sorry for playing a little rough today. Yeah, and then not all of us guys here at PCA feel the same way as Logan. Is that it? No. Um, we also heard you got pizza. And cake. Well, give them some food, turn up the music, and let's get this party started, yo! <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's enough. So Zoe 101 went on for four seasons, from 2005 to mid-2008. And like I said earlier, it was one of the biggest shows of its time, with the season three and four season finales being the most watched anything in Nickelodeon history up to that point. And this would have all been great, except in 2007, the world was shocked to discover that 16-year-old Jamie Lynn Spears was Prego. Now, at the time, and even still today, a lot of people thought that Zoe 101 was canceled because of the bibi. But the truth is, the series had already ended production in August of 2007, which was like a couple months before anyone knew anything about what she was getting up to, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Jamie took all of her sweet Nickelodeon paychecks and just kind of rolled off into the sunset, I guess. I think I've probably said this before about several other shows. Like, I think I said about uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, for example, and a couple other shows from around this same time. It's like, before the whole, like, magic and monsters and, like, fantastical whatever thing kind of entered the kind of, like, cultural zeitgeist or whatever, like, a lot of shows from back in the day that people really liked or even still like today were just so simple. Like, Zoe 101 is about nothing in particular, you know? Like iCarly is about like a girl and her friend and then her other friend and then they do online streaming and like, wow, isn't that something? Or even like Drake and Josh is about like, you know, two stepbrothers who have to learn to get together and there's kind of a little bit of a twist in there. Zoe 101 is literally just like a girl goes to school. The end. Like, that, that's the whole show. Like, there's not... I mean, I've, you know, as the show goes on, obviously it gets more complicated and there's more characters, but, like, the basic premise of Zoe 101 is a girl goes to school. And same with a lot of shows from this era, too. Things like, you know, One Tree Hill or whatever, Dawson's Creek. It's like, they're not about anything. They're just about, like, what if kids went to school and then had drama? Ta-da! Ten seasons, you know? Like, <laughs> back then, you could literally, like, have no idea for a show and get ten seasons out of it. I don't know how that works. Like, like, nowadays, nowadays, you could have, like, the most most amazing show ever and Netflix cancels it after like two or three seasons you know one thing I think is kind of interesting is how like you know on Disney Channel and also Nickelodeon's like some of their shows were three camera sitcoms actually most of them are three camera sitcoms but then every so often there'd be like a single camera drama for some reason with no laugh track no anything I don't know like, like when I think of Disney Channel shows or even like Nickelodeon shows that I've covered so far like Drake and Josh or iCarly or Victorious you know it's that very simple you know, laugh track, sitcom kind of setup. But then every so often they just have these shows that seem to have like a much higher budget and much more production value for like no particular reason. I don't know exactly what they were doing back then or why they did that. I'm not sure how they do it nowadays because um, believe it or not, I'm not real, you know, up to date on everything that's hip on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. But back then it just seemed kind of random. It's like suddenly there would be a single camera drama show that was sort of funny, but not really. Not sure what Dan Schneider was doing back then, but... They just let them do whatever you wanted, I guess. But yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Let me know what was your favorite part of the video or just say hi or tell me what, what other TV show or movie I should do besides Kissing Booth 2. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.